I had this moment a couple of weeks ago where I was sitting there and I was thinking about this whole idea of life experience, you know, because every time we make a choice, we get life experience. I thought, you know what? That's what each one of us is so abundant in. If you want to talk about a place where each one of us has so much abundance, it is in our life experience. And so every time we make a choice, whether we get the outcome we want or the outcome that we don't want, we get more life experience and we become more abundant. Mm. And how amazing is that, right? To add to our cup of abundance. Welcome to the Delicious Alignment Podcast, high vibing conversations with me, your host, Rhonda Ryder, where we discuss all things from a law of attraction point of view, including money and abundance, releasing anxiety, health and wellness, and of course, my specialty, loving your body and making peace with food. I want to invite you to join my Facebook group, Delicious Alignment, if you haven't already done so, where you can get daily inspirations and additional support. I am absolutely loving my Beyond the Hot Seat Summer Series, where I interview people who have asked Abraham Hicks questions at live workshops. Even if you're not familiar with Abraham Hicks, I know you will get so much out of this episode. Today's interview is with Mandy Mills, who was in the hot seat for the first time this past March. Mandy is an alignment coach and an inner voice facilitator who helps your inner child sync up to your inner being in a magical way that allows for a more satisfying and joy-filled experience of life. This episode today is a shorter episode, only 35 minutes, where Mandy and I discuss her hot seat experience, which led to the following discussions, really cool discussions how to follow your calling without worrying if you're making the right decision, how to give up being the stage manager of everyone else's life, the number one question to ask yourself when you're deciding whether to stay or leave a relationship. I I really loved Abraham's answer on this one. And also how to actually get in the hot seat and much, much more. By the way, yesterday I interviewed master coach and 12-time hot seater, Dominic Scaffody. You will not want to miss this interview coming out in June. Such an amazing chat. As Dominic said to me at the end, we really went deep in this conversation. Yes, we did. We absolutely did. Okay, so you might have noticed that I moved to two episodes per month instead of every Thursday. I hope to return to an every Thursday schedule soon when it feels good, right? Always follow your inner guidance. Who knows, I might be guided to have some bonus episodes this summer, so keep an eye out. The thing is, I felt a strong calling to take some time off to enjoy the summer with my family reconnect with friends. That's my vibe lately. And I have to tell you, it feels really good to stand in my abundance and listen to the guidance I'm receiving. I've been spending more time with my dad and my husband and practicing what I preach, right? Having more fun. That seems to be the guidance we all get when we tap into our inner beings, have more fun. That's where the magic happens. Having said all that, I am still available for coaching clients. That is fun for me, working with people in groups and one-on-one sessions. In fact, I have a few spots open for one-on-one, so go to deliciousalignment.com slash coaching for more information. I offer coaching where together we shift your energy on any topic rather quickly with often life-changing results. The method I use is pretty amazing. Alrighty then, let's get started with my conversation with Mandy Mills on the permission to choose what you really want. Hello, Mandy. Hi, Rhonda. Hello, great to see you. I'm so excited to speak with you today about 
beyond the hot seat. As you know, I'm interviewing folks who have been in the hot seat at a live Abraham Hicks workshop. I'm excited <laughs> to hear uh, about your experiences. I know we had a pre-chat where you were telling me some of the things and I can't wait to share them with, with my listeners. So yeah, let's, let's just dive in. Tell me about your hot seat experiences, wherever you want to start. Yeah, well, um, so my recent hot seat experience was on the Caribbean cruise back in March. And I loved that experience. Um, in the beginning, when I went up, I had an, a place I was going and it kind of went somewhere else, which I thought mm -hmm. was particularly fascinating. Um, the thing that I was there for was some clarity on um, really the the matches that I have in relationships. And um, particularly, I was interested in uh, in business, like finding the best matches that allowed me to, you know, have the trust and the, the ability to move and go fast um, in the different and various projects that I was desiring to work on. And so that's what I believed that I was going there for. And, and it was really fun, like a little backstory. I actually mm -hmm. signed up for that cruise two days before the cruise. Two days before. Two days before the <laughs> cruise, I got this really strong thing that was like, go on this cruise. And it, you know, I would call it a rocket of desire. It was like there. And, and this I is 20, 2023. Yeah, this yeah, year. Just okay. a couple of months ago. Yeah. And um, so I knew there was some reason that I needed to be there. And then this is what I came up with was this idea that, oh, I need a hot seat about this particular thing. This wanting to have a lot of speed in my business and my relationships and how how do I find and then release matches like find the good matches and release the matches that maybe were not, were didn't have as much mutuality, mm -hmm. just having more ease with that. So yeah, um, that was, that was what I got up there with the intention of finding more clarity on. Mm -hmm. And it was, it ended up being a little bit different. Okay. So let us, so, how, how, yeah, did, it go? how yeah. did it go? I'm so curious. Yeah. So I, started out with this really vague explanation of what I wanted and I became really activated because Abraham was like you need a specific example and I don't know why I pulled this one up but I did it was of a previous experience that I had when I was getting divorced a couple of years ago I believe that as it came up, it activated so much in me. I did get quite emotional. And I told the story of how I, when I was getting divorced, I basically wanted to know or have more clarity on that deciding to stay or deciding to go, which kind of correlated with what I wanted to know in business, right? So it's, it's obviously something that I was seeing in more than one place in my life. Having that clarity of yeah, what, what to do. What do I do? Yeah, yeah. In this situation, right. Abraham stopped me really fast and said, okay, now we're getting somewhere. You were telling all of this vague, like these vague details, information before, but now we can see that you're activated and, and now we're going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it led into the idea and the, the question of how do you know in a relationship when it's time to stay and when it's time to go? 
Mm-hmm. And the answer was that if somebody is just bothering you or really bothering you, then you probably don't want to go. But if you're feeling called to go somewhere, that's when you you go. And then we talked about how- <laughs> my mind is just. I I married about um let's see tw- it'll be 20 years soon and that's a I never even thought I would get married because my parents they just had a tumultuous relationship and I thought why well, get married I don't really see any anything really great why do that I I don't want to do that but here I am really proud of myself but sometimes you know that's that happens living with people they can bother you so I find this helpful so please continue yeah yeah and I had been married for over 20 years and when we kind of got into it Abraham asked me what what were you wanting what what was the reason that you left your relationship and And I said, you know, I wanted more commitment, more loyalty. And so we talked about how sometimes that's part of the calling is, is wanting more of something. And, you know, then the mutuality kind of decreases in the relationship when one person is really wanting something more. And then the next part of the hot seat was what you are really wanting is the permission to choose Mm. what you really want. And I thought that was really fascinating. Mm. Uh, Yeah, I could just, you know, I feel that. I feel that freedom, like, like a sigh of relief, like, oh, what I really want it's permission. It's also like afraid to make the wrong choice. But however, the freedom to make a choice, wrong or right, whatever, no judgment. Right? Yes. Yes. And I, in that moment, and I've, I've listened to the recording a lot of times since, um, I have felt myself release so much resistance over that idea of allowing myself to choose what I really wanted in a relationship and and really to differentiate between is it because this person's just bothering me or because I'm being called to another place and how does that work with preference? Mm -hmm. So I believe for everyone, it's a formula that maybe looks a tiny bit different for everyone. But for me, it it was just finding my own formula of in relationships with others. When it gets to that place where I'm considering whether this relationship is helpful for me or not, or, or even if it's a place where I want to stay to take those parts of that and put it in the mixing bowl and then find the clarity from that. Yeah. So this was something that happened in the past. You had already Mm -hmm. left that relationship, got a divorce. So you're in the hot seat asking Abraham, giving an example. This is the example. So looking back on that decision to divorce, do you feel like, yeah, in retrospect, Yes, I was being called as opposed to, well, he was just bothering me. It was more like you were being called. Is that how you view it? Yes. And now that I look back, I can see that I was being called so strongly that by staying, I was creating so much resistance for like three years in um, not listening to the call and not responding to the call to go somewhere new, um, it it created so much resistance. Yes. So is there anything else that you could share that you got out of that hot seat? 
Yes, I didn't realize that what I probably had been doing a lot in life was trying to be the stage manager. So the last part of my hot seat talked a lot about being the stage manager of other people. I realized as as I went through the hot seat, it was kind of like, hey, you don't you don't need to manage other people. Mm -hmm. You decide where you're going and you go that way and then let everyone else just do what they're going to do. That's a big one. That <laughs> That is a big one. Yes. Monumental and mm -hmm. probably even more valuable to me than the first part of the hot seat. Because I think depending upon who you are, sometimes you have a tendency to want to control the situation so that it will have the outcome that you are wanting. Mm -hmm. And so since my hot seat, I have had different places within my business or within my family or friendships where I've been able to gain a lot of awareness on the parts where I am really trying to be the stage manager and control the mm -hmm. outcome. Yes, absolutely. In that, I create a lot recovered, of... Recovered, yes, recovered control free <laughs> um, right here. Yes. Recovering, recovering. Yeah, it's a lot less stressful. Yeah, yeah. It's been so freeing to let that go and practice what you're exactly what you're saying, letting people do their own thing, letting them be who they are. And I mean, there's so many examples I could give right now. So many where it's just like, I'm just like, Oh, come on. I want to just go in there and say, you need to do this. And why don't you do that? And you need to do that. And it just, you know, to be able to, to stop yourself and say, that's, I don't need to do that. And I, I know I just said the word need about 25 times, but <laughs> it's not necessary anymore. I don't have to worry about that. Like for instance, my mother-in-law recently made her transition and my husband and I discovered while we were cleaning out her closet for my father-in-law that there were all these beautiful, gorgeous vintage clothes that she had in her closet that were, some of them were like never worn, has still have the tags on them. So we decided, oh, well, or he decided, you know, I'm going to take them and open up an online store and sell them. So he decided that's his project. He really wanted, didn't want my help in it. And man, was that difficult for me because <laughs> what do you know about fashion or clothing or I want to do it. I want to get in there and get my hands in there. But he obviously, for some reason, whatever reason, it's not for me to judge, wants to do this on his own. But boy, was that a big example of how I wanted to control things, but I was so proud of myself. I was so self-aware, just kind of stepping away and saying, okay, this is your project and I am going to stay out of it. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting because as the awareness comes that maybe if you are a person who has flowed that way in your life, which I am finding that I probably flowed that way more often than I would like to admit. Um, it, it takes a bit of practice, the releasing mm -hmm. of that need to control the situation to get the outcome. Yeah, I had a particular thing with one of the businesses I own, and it it was kind of a tricky situation with a client. And I found myself like sending these texts to all of the people in my organization, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I am being the stage manager again. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I was wanting this outcome. And it's one thing if you're delegating or you're um, right. giving specific things, but I, I realized that I was trying to, 
get people to behave a certain way. <laughs> so. You were trying to control things as opposed to just being efficient. There's, we know the difference. Come on. Let me yes. know. <laughs> I'm so glad you clarified that for me. <laughs> um, yes. And I did. I had this moment where it was such an aha and it was like oh, stage, I, I call it stage manager. And mm -hmm. I then backed off and my stress level went down quite a few notches. And I knew I'd handed it over to the inner being. And I was like, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. Mm -hmm. And it was such a freeing, yes, such a freeing um, moment for me. Yeah, but, it is. It yeah. is. It is really free. That way. <laughs> yes, it is freeing. And my daughter lives with us right now. And, and so does her dog, who we love, has become part of the family. And I want to get in there and say, you need to take him to the vet. And I keep reminding myself, it's not my dog. You know, it's not my dog, number one. And so I do energy work as well and I'll go ahead and I receive calibrations and coaching and I will get calibrated on this subject soon because I just feel like okay here's an issue where I want to get in there and I want to control but I am so proud of myself to see how far I've come and how much I have learned how to let go and let everybody just be themselves. This is like what Abraham's always talking about. It's none mm -hmm. of my business. You know, I, I mean, she's living in our home. So there's, you know, there's certain things. There's just a few boundaries, just common sense things. But other than that, it's just like, it's your life, what you do. And as long as you're living here, these boundaries are, you know, you respect those, then really it's your business. Yeah. And just acknowledging that you have come a long way to, I mean, I'm going to clap for you because yeah. I'm clapping for myself too. Any bit of awareness, I think is so wonderful for us. Yes. And I think in, in the long run too, I've also noticed that when I am in stage manager mode, I am blocking a lot of the receiving, you know, that I have the capability of having and as I've stepped back that's also been another bonus I've seen is I am just so much more open to receiving and things turn out so much better for me you know instead of being tuned to oh what this person is doing and what this person is doing and what that person is doing I'm now tuned to what's important to me and in the long run, the outcome is actually, I'm finding that the outcomes are better. Mm -hmm. So that has been the, the big result I've seen is, hey, in the long run, because you're open to receiving, so it's taking the next yes, going this way, going that way, instead of, you know, in the mind, trying to control. And Mandy, what about getting in the hot seat? Are there any tips you might be able to give anyone who'd like to actually get in the hot seat? when they're at Abraham workshop? Well, I think it kind of, for me, goes back to that calling thing. You know, I knew that I was supposed to go on that cruise. Um, it came as a rocket of desire. There was something there for me. And so I went into that day with just kind of a light expectancy that it would happen because I was like, I know that I'm coming here for a reason. So for me, it was just kind of sitting there. And when I raised my hand, I just kept everything in light thought. And I had a subject, growth. Growth was my subject. I didn't have it bogged down by a whole bunch of different things. Um, I just was light. I want to talk about growth. Raised my hand and I was chosen. So I believe that if you're wanting... Uh, to hot seat that keep the light thought keep the subject in your light thought and go in with that mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful and it's really like anything in life having that soft desire we've talked a, a lot about that 
on this podcast, having a light desire, a soft desire, if you want something, as opposed to being attached to a certain outcome. You're not attached, just soft desire. It would be cool. And I have a, in your case, you have a subject in mind, but being really light about it. Isn't that what we learn a lot from this work is to be light about it. I think, um, well, Gina Mallison and even Amanda Town, who've been on my podcast, maybe they've gotten this from Liz Hayes. I don't know, but it's the catch and release. Does she say that? So it's like you release it, like you have the desire, you catch it, and then you release it. I I thought maybe they got Mm -hmm. it from Liz because they both said it. And um, so I love that catch and release. You catch the desire and then you release it. You let it go. You you forget about it. I mean, for the longest time, I thought we need to hold on to it, remind the universe about what it is that we want. Meanwhile, the universe doesn't need to be reminded. It knows. Yeah. I, I love the catch and release. I use it quite often when I have a desire for something. It's the ability to catch the desire for a moment and then release it. And you can play that. Catch and mm-hmm. release, catch and release. And it's really helpful. And, and not knowing, not knowing how it's going to turn out. I was just speaking with someone this morning a friend of yours who's going to be on the show as well, who was in the hot seat eight times, Reed Thompson. We're talking about, he doesn't have these goals anymore. It's not goal oriented. It's simply what's next. What's next. What am I being guided to next? And just like following that calling. And that's pretty much how I live my life now. Yeah. Yes. And I think if we want to talk about alignment, you know, that's the thing when you are, let's use business, for example, um, for a long time, business for me was this like, you know, goal driven, action driven uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And now for me, it's more like, oh, purpose. And, you know, what feels fun? And what what am I curious about? And that's actually where I go. I've Mm -hmm. just decided that my business is a place to explore things that are curious to me and whoever else is out there that matches that curiosity, you know, Oh, what feels curious? Let's, let's discover it together. Yeah. So I think that is why I love doing the podcast because I'm such a curious person And I get to talk to people like yourself. So we're constantly feeding each other. And I just wonder sometimes, again, going back to that permission slip to choose or permission slip to do what you want. Sometimes I have the question in my mind, but am I making the right choice? Am I doing the right thing? Am I following the calling? Is there gold at the end of this tunnel is is there something in it for me at the end what if i'm making the wrong choice like and that's the thing that comes up for me but i still take the leap i don't let it stop me i still take the leap because i do trust more than you know if you look at the balance scale the trust is way higher the fear is not going to block me from doing what I'm being called to do. Yes. And the purpose, like, I feel like these are my gifts to interview people. Let me go with what I'm being called to do. Yeah. I feel like it's very purpose driven. Yeah. Yeah. That has been since this last hot seat, really where I've been going. It's like, Oh, what's calling me right now. And I, I just love this way of being this, this purpose driven, Mm -hmm. what's calling me and knowing that whoever matches that or has mutuality in that match is going to come my way. 
When you talk about the the not knowing on the making decisions, my favorite thing has been to just start looking at it from the perspective of what life experience do I have that I now that I didn't have then. And I had this moment a couple of weeks ago where I was sitting there and I was thinking about this whole idea of life experience. You know, because every time we make a choice, we get life experience. I thought, you know what? That's what each one of us is so abundant in. If you want to talk about a place where each one of us has so much abundance, it is in our life experience. And so every time we make a choice, whether we get the outcome we want or the outcome that we don't want, we get more life experience and we become more abundant. Mm. And how amazing is that, right? To add to our cup of abundance. I love that because I never quite thought of that, that life experience is just adding to the abundance, abundance of life experience. That's another thing. If you want to be more abundant, you could, you can't deny that you have an abundance of life experience. No, I mean, we all do. We all do. It's something that each one of us possesses, like the lifetime full of life experience, the yes. lifetime of life experience. It's, uh, I think it, it really does take the stress of making decisions away for me anyway. Anything that's going to help you focus on abundance. Like if you're having trouble feeling you're abundant with the money, you can say, well, look, I'm abundant. I have an abundance of life experience. I have an abundance of of trees <laughs> in my in my physical environment. I was taking a walk the other day and there's so many leaves, millions and millions and millions of leaves in the forest on the trail where I live. And I thought, imagine if these leaves were dollar bills. Look how many millions and billions of leaves are, are just are surrounding me right now. Like the abundance of that, just tapping into that feeling of abundance. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really beautiful. When I started looking at things that way, it just opened up a whole new world for me. Yeah. Great. So Mandy, let us know how people can find you, what kind of work you're doing now. I know you're doing some amazing things. I have seen you on Instagram. I've been watching your videos saying, oh, I like the way she's doing that, by the way. I'm going to copy some of her techniques for, no, TikTok. I think you're doing more TikTok than, yeah, yeah you like TikTok. Well, both, both. both I'm doing both. TikTok and Instagram mostly. There's a little bit of Facebook. And so those are the social media platforms you can find me on at the Mandy Mills, spelled M-A-N-D-E-E-M-I-L-L-S. And I am an inner voice facilitator. I help the inner child in each one of us sync up to the inner being and really begin to hear our inner voice, our inner personal guidance, to find that aligned feeling on the inside so that then our outside world starts to match. Mm -hmm. And we work in the healing realm um, and then we move on to the creation side of things. And it has just been yeah, it's so much fun. I love helping others to, to align their lives in a way that allows them to go after their dreams and their desires and their preferences. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about that inner child, inner voice work that you do? How does that look like when someone works with you? What do they experience? Yes. So what I do is I allow space, energetic space for the inner child to be seen. And the inner child is responsible for our emotions, I believe. And quite often the inner child, when they have big emotions, it makes it really hard for us to hear 
the guidance from the inner being or our inner voice, our personal guidance. Um, you can imagine it like a toddler that is maybe throwing a tantrum. You really can't hear or concentrate on anything on the outside. And so what we do is we go in and soothe the inner child. So in a session, I would take time. And especially in the beginning, there's a, a quite often a lot of healing work that needs to be done. And so we go in and soothe and look at some of the beliefs of the inner child. And then we connect the inner child energetically to the inner being. It's a sync up process that was created by Liz Hayes. And we have just seen amazing results. I personally, with my own clients, whether in their personal life, their family life, or their business life, I would call it life changing work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I believe yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Just anytime you connect with your inner being, and I just find it so fascinating the language that you're using to connect the inner child with the inner being. Now I am speaking to a lot of people's inner being at the end of our session, the sessions I do with them. I am actually speaking, calling their inner being in because I feel like anybody can do it. Anybody can connect with their inner being, of course. And But I'm actually talking to their inner beings and it's like talking to infinite wisdom. It's like talking to Abraham sometimes. It's like yeah. we all, like we all have that. Yes. And I just love the part of adding the inner child, because let me tell you why. I believe that the inner being has plays in this unlimited way, this way where they, they have like, the heavenly, or uh, um, unlimited non physical um, solution. But then we're actually here in this reality, this human reality. And that's why we bring in the inner child, because the inner child, in the language of emotion, gives a lot of feedback to the inner being about what it's like to be playing in this physical way. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like when you add that, that little piece of that, you... Um, create this like two way bit mm -hmm. of communication that allows you to create even more deliberately. Mm. And yes. so it's been really fun. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. Total, total sense. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, living in uh physical 3d world is, is quite interesting and provides lots of life experience <laughs> and lots of opportunities to choose yeah. and make decisions. Yeah. And so when we work in that way and we, we address and find awareness about where the inner child is at and, and do so with honesty, um, we can actually allow a lot of that resistance to fall away mm -hmm. and open up a lot of space for new beliefs and new opportunities and uh, new dreams and new desires. And I just, I see my clients moving at even a faster speed in their expansion, which is not for everybody, but for somebody like me and maybe yourself, um, expansion is like alignment. It's delicious. It's, it's the juice. So yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Delicious. I like that word. Yeah. Well, great. And do you have a website? Oh, I do. It's um, studio inhale exhale.com. Yeah. Studio inhale exhale.com. Great. All of Mandy's links will be in the show notes as well. So I want to thank you so much, Mandy, for spending this time with us today. Thank you, Rhonda. I have appreciated this opportunity so much. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Mandy Mills. 
You can find Mandy on her website at studioinhaleexhale.com. I love that. Inhale, exhale. You can find her also on social media by searching Mandy Mills. That's Mandy with two E's. And all links, as always, are in the show notes. If you enjoy this podcast, I would love it if you would be so kind as to tell your friends about the show, Delicious Alignment, High Vibing Conversations with Rhonda Ryder. Just grab the link, deliciousalignment.com slash podcast. Text a few friends, or post about the show on social, and let's share this resource with people interested in raising their vibes even higher on any and all topics. Have a delicious day and I will talk to you next time.